Today's company review is going to be on Noel Brands. The way I came around this is because I've been noticing a lot of great cold baby stuff around and I decided to look into the company because it seems like everyone involved with this company is highly praising it all the time. The reviews are great and so I decided my investing mind needs to look into the company, see what's going on. I found out that it's owned by New World Brands and the first thing I wanted to look up is what percentage of New World Brands does a great call contribute. So naturally <clears throat> I went online and I figured out that 60% of New World Brands is actually Graco, even though they claim that they own 80 plus brands. This is the website for New World Brands. Sorry, I'm having a hard time navigating it here. And at a glance, this is what they brag about. They brag about sales of 8.5 billion, which actually are down um, from previous years. They brag about their employees of 288,000. They brag about three operating segments, Fortune World's Most Admired Companies in 2022 and 2023, 80 plus iconic brands, and 35% international sales. Let's look at some of these brands. They have them here. Some of the highlights. I don't recognize most of these, but obviously Elmer's Glue, right? Expo. Papermate is a familiar one. You might see ones that you like or know about Sharpie, obviously. Everybody knows Sharpie. They own Graco, there's the big one, 60% of revenue just from that one company out of the 80. Even though there's some bigger names here. Rubbermaid, they have under food categories. Um, Rubbermaid, <laughs> they have also home appliances, Sunbeam, Crockpot. Outdoor and recreation. Everybody knows Coleman. I don't know anyone who doesn't know Coleman brand. And Contigo is a big one too. I have a mug by Contigo. So anyways, they own 80 plus brands and 60% from one company. So I wanted to look at all the numbers from New World Brands and try to determine whether or not this company is a buy. Okay? Or should I avoid it? I'm going to talk from a personal perspective, but, you know, just like anything else finance related on the internet, make sure that you are doing your own due diligence when it comes to any kind of purchase or sell of securities. If you're confused, consult professionals. I am not liable for anything you do with any kind of stock on any level at any time. So going into um, stockanalysis.com, that's where I'm going to be getting all my figures from. They're pretty accurate. I really like this website. It's free. There is no payment that you need to be doing. Just occasional ad pops up every now and then. It's not a big deal. I'm not necessarily, you know, I'm not endorsing the, the site. I'm not, I don't have an affiliation with anyone, um, as you can tell by my channel size. And I might never have one unless stockanalysis.com comes over and be like, hey, we want to work together. <laughs> so moving on, financials. First glance, market cap is a 3.35 billion, fairly small compared to the revenue that just Graco is generating. Revenue is 8.88 billion at the moment. Net income, this is a problem, negative 139. And the reason why it's a problem, guys, is because it's not a new company. It's not only not a new company, but it's also uh, not a growth company either. Okay, they basically just buy existing brands and try to squeeze money out of them. The whole point of doing that, the whole point of doing that is so you can make money. And if you're not making money doing that, you're doing something seriously wrong. So right off the first page, before I even go into death, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> a little Freudian slip. Before I go into depth, into the numbers, I can tell you right away that this is poorly managed and all the things I don't like about a company like this. They gather a bunch of brands and what happens is the most successful ones, they lift the unsuccessful ones into existence. Brands that normally would not survive if it weren't for the ones that were keeping them alive, right? Because it's a little bit like communism there, right? The wealth gets spread out a little bit 
and all the lazy brands or the ones that are not profitable anyways. I'm not saying anyone working for these companies is lazy, but the company just is not making money. So the ones that are not making money get subsidized by the more successful ones, and that's just how it goes. And the, all, the entire company is worse off for it. This kind of company may benefit from a little bit of creative destruction, if you know what I mean. Maybe some of those brands need to be sold off or maybe rejuvenated. Somebody has to do a little bit of dirty work in to try to uh, figure out how can they kickstart a brand again into profitability. But in this big conglomerate type of situation here, this brand holding company, it just isn't working. Something is definitely not working. Now, this company does pay a dividend. Um, they recently cut it quite sharply. Let's go straight to the dividend, actually. So there's a dividend history. Um, they used to have a 23 cent dividend. Now it's 7 cents, a reduction of over 60%. Here's a graph of their dividend history. In February 2014, they were raising dividends. They had the money. And now, in 2023, when things are not going as well, they cut the dividend to 7 cents. All right, decrease of 70% almost. I'm going to go into the financials now to figure out what this company's been up to, how it's been moving, how the numbers have been moving. I like to look at it quarterly so I can get a little bit of extra definitions on the numbers. The revenue, the top line, used to be pretty steady. Um, there, uh, it underwent some turmoil here in 2015, 2016. Most likely there was some kind of acquisitions. It doesn't matter. I don't need to look at the history to figure this out. Um, I can also tell about the about the debt and share issuance that there was some con something going on either consolidation M and A acquisitions whatever. But the but the the thing is the problem is that in the past year or two, okay, it hasn't really grown since 2021. It's been on a downhill slope, man. Downhill slope. So this is their best quarter in a while, 2021, and the peak of the spending frenzy from new families <laughs> and then it's just kind of a steady decline and now the most recent quarter is just as good as march 2020 what was going on in march 2020 complete freeze complete freeze of the entire economy the entire world that's how bad this recent quarter was when it comes to revenue i'm not even talking about earnings i'm talking about just the top line and you know expenses have increased since then. So anyways, I'm already ran, you know, already mad at this company. <laughs> and I haven't even started digging into the numbers. Let's, before we go to the, continue the, uh, on the numbers here, let's look at the forecasts. What are these analysts thinking, man? Look at this. Look at these predictions. A low of 9. A low of 9. And a high of 28. What? There's only a few of them that only one person that says sell the company. I'd definitely sell this company. I'd, I'd be a strong sell, actually. Um, not to reveal my hand too early. But, you know, obviously it could be wrong. But based on what I'm seeing, I'm definitely not buying this. Continue on, on to the numbers. Revenue, as we discussed, downtrend. Let's take a look at um, re uh, revenue, cost of revenue. Okay, at least they're not spending as much to generate that revenue. But let's take a look at the income. Look at this. Negative 102 million in the most recent quarter. Uh, negative 272 million. And then before that, it was 31 million. The less profitable quarter was in June 2022. So a year ago. They've been losing money for a year straight, guys. A year straight. So here's that uh, shares outstanding that I've been talking about. Here's that 15, 16 period, 2015, 2016, where um, the share count nearly doubled. That's probably the acquisition. And then they've been re trying to reduce the share count, but something tells me they might have to put a halt on that. Otherwise, they're just going to keep going in debt, which is what they've been doing. That's the choice they've been making lately in order to stay afloat. They've been actually um, issuing more debt. Gross margin around 26%. 
but it's been going down. This bad news. It's, it was in the 30s for a long time, and now, since 2022, it's been dipping down all the way down to 26.7. Um, the heydays of having 37, 38, 39 percent gross margin are way behind us in 2016. Here comes the shuffle and then a reduction from 35 all the way to 26. That's not good news. Profit margin. Well, obviously it's negative now, but I mean, you can average that to about zero. <laughs> Very low profit margin in the last, you know, four years. Um, let's take a look at the statistics, or actually the balance sheet. Debt, that's what I want to see. I want to see the debt. Total liabilities, total debt, right here. So here's this 15 period. Um, they, they issued a bunch of debt. So from 3 billion to 11 billion, $8 billion for that acquisition. It definitely did not pay dividends. Okay, it definitely decreased the value of the company, so perhaps it was not a smart move in retrospect. Whatever that move was, I don't need to know. Again, just looking at numbers, right? It tells the whole story. Statistics. Market cap of $3.35 billion. Enterprise value of $9 billion, giving us about $6 billion of debt. We can find that in the balance sheet, shortened balance sheet here. Here it is, net, here it is, net cash, $5.86 billion. Figures, PE ratio, non-existent, not a profitable company. Forward P, 8.9, yeah, right, who's giving you that? PS ratio, 0.38, so this is what I'm saying, right? They make a lot of sales for the valuation, but they're not making any of the money for a year straight. It's a really worrying sign. Yes, perhaps this company is one that is more sensitive to the economy and one could argue that we're a macro environment where the economic slowdown is real, um, especially in some sectors, and that's fine, fair and dandy, but that's not a reason to own this company, right? That's, that's not a reason to own the company. If you think you'll make a turnaround, fine, but you better have some good reasons. You need some inside knowledge. Maybe there's some decisions that the, the, the management's taking. Maybe they're selling off some brands. I don't know. But there needs to be some kind of change in order to survive moving forward. What if the environment is the same as it is now five years from now? What's the reason for investing here? EV to sales, one. That's not that great. EV to free cash flow, non-existent. Price to free cash flow, non-existent. Not a profitable company. Profit margin, minus 1.57%. All right, look, you get, the, you get the picture. You get the picture. I looked at the um, 8K, so you can't see it's a little bit cut off from the screen. But basically, I looked at their debt, and it's about uh, 3 point. I'm sorry, it's anywhere between 4% and 6.6%. Um, the biggest chunk of money is due on 2026, which is at 4.2%. Um, I guess it's not bad. They're financing at pretty good rates. But um, that's still going to weigh a lot on them. Like, how is somebody supposed to be paying dividends when you're struggling to pay the interest on your debt? Like that's going to put so much strain on the earnings. Oh, wait. What earnings? <laughs> they have no earnings. <laughs> no earnings. So even though there is uh, an enterprise value, you know, that is fairly high here compared to the zero earning company. I don't even think it's, I don't think anything is worth that. I don't think it's worth a $9 billion enterprise value. So I don't know. I mean, what I would like to know is what somebody's reason to buy the stock. Right? What is their reasoning? Like I said, this is not a growth company. Okay? Look at the revenue figures. Right? 
It's it's flat. This is a, a company that's supposed to be taken in cash. It's a company that's supposed to be squeezed for its earnings to reinvest and buy more brands. But right now, there's been just acquisitions that don't have anything to show for it. I think a lot of these brands, the vast majority probably would be better off individually owned and let um, either either they need to be let um, into their death or somebody needs to pick them up and change them. Maybe buy out the brand name only when they're in despair and, and try to turn around, restructure, maybe make some uh, efficiency improvements, um, some rebranding, okay, and then rejuvenation of the company, of the brands. But obviously, Noel isn't doing that. So for all these reasons, I would definitely not buy Noel brands. Even though Greco, I think, Greco, excuse me, I think it's a very, you know, solid brand and solid company. They might be better off on their own. The thing is they have so much drag in them, right? It's not just the debt. It's not just the interest on these, you know, that $6 billion of debt that's slowing the company down, the brand down. It's all the other brands that are unprofitable that they have to drag up. Plus, I don't even know. They don't They don't say how profitable Greco is, right? They share the revenue figures, but it might be, you know, they might be subs uh, uh, subsidizing that brand as well. Like maybe they're cutting the margins so razor thin just so they can dominate the market that the investor gets nothing for it. So it, there is a possibility that there is kind of a, this growth story within a sinking ship, right? Kind of like, you know, sacrifice the mothership for, <laughs> you know, one growing ship to escape. I don't know, maybe that's a, a biological um analogy would be better to make in this scenario, but I think you catch my drift. So perhaps there is that story there, but I just don't think it's worth $9 billion of enterprise value. All right, so for me, this company is a no. Let me know if you own the company. Let me know why you own it. I'll be really interested to figure out why somebody would actually buy this company. Tell me in the comments below. Peace out.